All right. Hi. Hi, everybody. So uh, kind of a light group today. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, Don, we're going to be revisiting some things from yesterday's community call, basically just kind of taking a look at the goals. So <laughs> cool. I'm going to be multitasking anyways, because I just got my new work laptop, um, oh. the new one every three years. <clears throat> Um, but that means that I'm re-logging into everything, um, I... development environment set up again, I'm copying files around. So yeah. it's, it's totally mindless, tedious work um, that I'm going to... Yeah. Do you have a, you have like a Linux PC or something? No, it's a MacBook. Because I always just use Time Machine and do our quick restore. Yes, that would be that would be super easy, except that um, I tried that and it screwed up all of the VMware stuff. Um, oh. because they ship it with like certificates and things. And okay, it, yeah, it did. Yeah. It did very bad things. And oh. so I do have all of the files from that Time Machine copied over, but they put them in in the wrong places because they couldn't write to the right places. And it was. Yes, it should have been easier. It is not, sadly. And I used to think it was fun setting up a computer, like back when I was 25. Yeah, yeah. it was exciting. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't want to do this. I just told Sam that, that I just bought a new computer today, and, then, oh. and uh, I spent the whole morning to set up everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God right. I have iCloud and uh, and OneDrive. Yeah. Yeah. Most of my most of my stuff is either stored in Git or uh, OneDrive or Google Drive. Um, yeah. So so from that standpoint, like the documents and stuff aren't a big deal. It's just like Git configurations and. Yeah, I use a lot of specialized lot of software. And yeah. That, and so it's like lo reloading all of that is a giant pain and. Yeah. Well, Don, we will let you get back to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess we have a, a couple of things. Yui, this will mostly be for, for you. So obviously, congratulations on Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. being Big elected time. to the chaos to the chaos board. That's absolutely fantastic. So um, you know, I don't know how much you kind of know what the expectations are, but we have two meetings as a board a year. I would say that I think Don and Sean can kind of attest to this. The email traffic is very light yeah. over the course of the year, particularly to the for the board members. And typically the board meeting is also pretty light. It's mostly just a kind of an update of things that we're, we've been working on over the past six months. Um, we usually don't leave that meeting with action items for any board member, unless somebody would like to step up and do it. Um, so, so, you know, this is great. So it's, it's but but we have a lot of feedback from, from board members as well. And I think it's great personally to have you on the board uh, because you are such an active member in, in the Asia Pacific call and the metrics model working group. So I, I really like to have kind of active board members, which is just absolutely wonderful to see. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Yeah, and I'm super excited to finally have someone from from Asia representing on the. Uh huh. On the yes. That's great. Exactly. Yeah, it's really important. I'm very happy to see that. I agree. Thank you. Um, so Yuhui, if you could send, we're going to need us just a picture of you and a small bio. You could take mm -hmm. a look at the chaos, the current uh, uh, website that we have for board members. And you can send that directly to Kevin. I put his email address in the minutes there. Mm -hmm. So he just needs that really simple stuff from you. And then we'll get that updated on the website. Okay. And the bio can be anything about you. So, um, and then I just, just for the, for this call too, thanks to Ray and Andrea who are, were stepping down from the board. I honestly think both Ray and Andrea were original board members uh, when the project started. So they've been on the board for the entire time. Um, just a note on the holiday schedule. We the, Next week is basically next week is our last week of meetings. And then we're going to be taking really a month off of chaos meetings just because of the U.S. holiday and the new year. Uh, they're all just... Uh, 
actually, I, I have already got, got, got used to it because we was working at uh, Ericsson. So December, the first week of December, it's uh, mm -hmm. the last week of the working working week. And after that, a lot of people just left for, for their vacation. Yeah, I mean, it's just, we could have the meetings, but there are even, <laughs> sometimes they're just they're like two people or one person and we just literally can't do anything. So, um, so anyway, that's the schedule. We'll obviously be sending out announcements prior to starting back up, but basically just a month off for the holiday. So I hope you have a nice time, whatever you're planning on doing. Is anybody doing anything big for the holidays? Like going anywhere? Going, yeah. at you, Don. Going to Dallas? Ohio. Ohio, represent. Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. I'm going to Dallas. That's my current plan. However, with uh, the yeah. um, it's a little uncertain. I still have, I still have flights and I still plan to go. Okay. It might though, you... derail my New Year's plans because I, the plan was, you know, to get home just in time to do New Year's stuff. But now I'm going to have to self-isolate until I get a PCR result, which is that which... the you have to do that coming back to the UK. Yeah, that's a current UK requirement. So when you okay. get here, you have to take a PCR test and then wait for the results. Okay. So, okay. So it depends well. on how fast I can get results. All right. Isn't PCR the one that's where they're like anywhere from one to <laughs> one to eight days? <laughs> you're like, yeah, oh, they're right they're the send send away to a lab, um, and okay. depending on where you get it, you can get them in you know like next day. But okay. But it depends. Okay. Well. Ohio's great. Maybe it'll be snowy and lovely and wintry. Who knows? Uh, all right. I'm I'm personally not doing anything much. So just kind of <laughs> hanging out in Omaha. A lot of families coming here. So that's that kind of solved that problem for me. I'm always tempted over the holidays to go to Colorado for spring break or not spring break to go skiing just in Colorado because steamboat is not terribly far from where I am. Um, so anyway. Uh, all right. So really, Yuhui, you know, what we talked about yesterday in the, the community call uh, was, was goal setting for 2022. And I have a list of, of goals in here and I'll share my screen okay. that came up yesterday. And honestly, I, I kind of reworked the list from yesterday down to slightly different groupings. I'm sure I can get it further down. Um, but there, interestingly, there were a couple things that I, I took away from our goal setting, which was a lot about how to communicate the work that we're doing in the chaos project better, uh, and how to kind of lower the barriers to entry for the project. Those seem like those were the two biggest takeaways for me or for me. I don't know if, if other people kind of saw that as well there there were in community building there were there were other things in here as well but those were two really really big things for me lowering barriers to entry and kind of disseminating our work a little bit more deliberately so i guess the question for you yahoo is are there are there things maybe on this list or things that you've been thinking about that you'd like to see the chaos project doing a little bit more deliberately coming up in 2022 uh, I think for me, except actually, I have going through the whole the whole goals before the meeting. I think it's uh, it's already good enough. But but from uh, from a China perspective, I I wanna uh, create more uh, connections with uh, communities, open source communities in in China, uh, to to uh, get more entrance to the chaos community because. In the chaos community in China, there's uh, so far as I can see, there's more than almost 100 people from more than uh, 20, 20 different uh, communities have joined together. They uh, we will hold up a weekly meeting and to discuss the, everything about the metrics and metrics model. So. I want to get a, a set up this bridge between uh, Chaos China and uh, with our Chaos community to contribute more uh, metrics and metrics model and new ideas to the com uh, community, to the Chaos community. Got it. I agree. 
Um, do you think you had mentioned there were a number of people who are participating in, in weekly meetings? With respect Every meeting, to... there's more than there are most of the 20 people at least. Okay. And uh, and uh, in in that uh, we have you know we have WeChat, this mm -hmm. um, uh, um, chat 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 tools, and in that in that WeChat, uh, we have almost uh, one hundred people to join this uh, WeChat uh, communication channel, and uh, and those one hundred people coming from more um, more than twenty different uh, uh, communities and all re represent. By their companies. Gotcha. So we do can you, see. Do you think, go ahead. Yeah, we can, we can see more and more people or co communities have uh, put more focus on, on these areas. And they want uh, to uh, get more knowledge about their own communities, even though with their the similar communities uh, uh, compared with, 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 with their own. Do you think there's a possibility from the 20 people who participate in the weekly meetings or the 100 people who are on WeChat of, of any individuals who would be interested in, in kind of helping build that bridge? Because I agree, that would be great. Um, but I think we need a kind of a dedicated group mm -hmm. that think about how to, to do that. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think Xiaoya Xiaoya is a very good people to yeah. uh, we working together to even together with the uh, other uh, he uh, her classmates together to to manage the whole uh, the whole WeChat uh, channel and uh, and uh, I think um, uh, using the different ways uh, through the weekly meeting and uh, 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 chaos chaos cast in China. Uh, they invite a lot of different people uh, to. Uh, uh, they have a lot of experiences in, in the community management and uh, and and the governance. And uh, we want to get uh, more connections with uh, with uh, different universities and uh, officials, uh, like standard bureau. So. Is there? I'm trying to think. Is there precedent in other communities for identifying individuals who are in different global regions, like with a with a some recognition from the community, like a you know Asia Pacific liaison or a European liaison? Or I, I'm trying to think if if there's any way that we can identify a person kind of more officially in the Chaos Project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a role that they have in in China, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've never. You go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say one of um, part of it's a little bit different, but in in Kubernetes, one of the things that that they have are you know like like meetup leads and things like that for different locations. So there's like a you know, there's different working groups, right? So there's like a contributor experience working group. And then within that contributor experience working group, they have um, kind of people who help coordinate things in certain geographies. I don't remember what, what we called them. It was specifically for a contributor experience, not like for the whole project. But I think I it's that. I think it's a really good idea. But, but my point is you can kind of do it two ways. You can do like, um, you know, like communications or something and have somebody be sort of the point person for, um, you know, Slack and WeChat and whatever. Um, so you can kind of do it, do it that way. And, and that's part of how Kubernetes does it. So they have like, you know, they have admins for certain things and they make sure that they have like Slack admins that are across multiple geographies. I'm not sure if that helps or just makes it more complicated. I think it helps. It helps. It helps Does me. Kubernetes recognize these the these individuals like somewhere, or is it just kind of this informal, you know? Because like we I have the. Remember. I was thinking maybe something a little bit more formal because we have like the board 
You know what I mean? But then every other role we have is just kind of an informal recognition. Yeah, that's true. Because in Ubuntu, they, they have a lot of different local team in different, in different, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, mainland in European, in, F, F, uh, in Asia, in, in, in America, they have the, their own local team. They call the, their team as LOCO team, if I remember correctly. And, uh, and uh, in their own uh, local team, they have their own membership management. They don't have to, and they know how to recognize their own contributions to to the to this community and give them some recogni uh, recogni uh, recognitions. To you know, there is a channel to let them to uh, to change the role or update their role from the normal con contributor to you know as a key contributors. Something like a badge. Okay? I kind of like this idea of some. Yeah, I don't think you do anything formal in Kubernetes. I was just poking okay. around some of the the documentation, but I I like the idea of having something more formal. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, I, I'm thinking like what that would. But that would be that's one of the goals in 2022, like we were talking about yesterday. We don't have to figure it out today. That would yeah. be that would be the hope is, is that we can figure that out. All right, cool. And um, Sean or Elizabeth, I don't know if you had comments on this as well. Um, I think I think it's a good idea. I don't exactly understand how it will work, and I think one of the challenges is the size of our community. Of course, is much smaller than Kubernetes, but I think these regional liaison kinds of things could be very helpful. I think my my vision, at least just talking about it now, is to have an identified individual who, um, who, who we can talk to, like kind of from a coordination perspective. To, yeah. I think the thing is that we have a lot of people to 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 be to be a, a, a abstracted to to these communities. They they want to know more things, and uh, we we treat them as a you know as a as a casual contributors or, or members of communities. But they when they get deep involved into the community work, their contribution have have to be recognized. So, so some some way. Mm -hmm. So, I, as me, I am very be I'm very honored to be nominated as a as board. But except for me, there's a lot of other people from Asia, from European, from America. So, I think we should give them a normal or standard channel to let them know how they quickly to become some role or or, or, or get these recognitions from communities. And and like 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 you Max mentioned, then we have a chance to 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 have a communication uh, face to face on, online, of course, with those people to listen more thinking so ideas from those people. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'd also oh, that's I was just listening to you talk too. It, it'd be great because I'd like to. Also, lower the barriers for somebody in, say, Asia or Africa or Europe, whoever this person might be, to um, to also be comfortable asking for resources of the Chaos Project. So, like, if it's a financial ask, that <laughs> they know yeah. that in this, it's completely fine to ask for money for a meetup or to ask um, for support from the for example say from the linux foundation to have yeah. a meetup associated with some conference that's being run by the lf like i think a lot of people feel pretty distant from that and if we could formalize the role we to hear you can hear these are the things you can totally ask you can ask us for money you can ask us to coordinate with an event you can whatever you can ask us yeah for, whatever you get what i'm saying like it's okay like completely fine to ask for these things and we have a process by which we review it but 
um, also lower that barrier or, or access to, I think what Don was talking about, like maintainership on particular, say, repositories or on a Slack channel. Like if that would yeah. be helpful, just, you're, you're totally okay to ask. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, we want to enable, I mean, the, the resources and, and accesses to enable engagement. Um, we want you to ask. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. That was great. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, you're unmuted, so maybe you have a comment. It depends if her microphone's working today. I was on a Is call it... with I was on a call with her yesterday where her microphone was like going berserk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she just so she says it's not working <laughs> again today. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really it was like it sounded like a broken computer trying to voice activate. It was really weird. Elizabeth, on this, on the asking for things, if you need a new microphone, <laughs> just, just ask. <laughs> no problem in that. All right. Um, I, I think this is great, Yehui. I mean, if, is there anything else that you see on this list? Uh, the, the, the other interesting I got uh, from this uh, goes uh, is about the uh, uh, solid state uh, user feedback survey. How, how to how to use survey to guide the uh, chaos feedback? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm I'm yeah, super interested on this part <laughs> because I do a lot of trials on, on my own uh, on on the uh, in the communities I join. Uh, you know, uh, initialized by Huawei, for example, Oberola, Manspo, and Open Gaussu, some some other uh, communities because they do uh, some surveys. Uh, you know. Uh, to uh, in the different uh, developer journey from 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 uh, files different guidelines we insert the story and also we insert the story into the uh, sub issue handling part you know, for example uh, at the end of the is issue closed we post this story on on this issue and uh, to get the developers feedback so so for this part, I, 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 I'm, I'm very interested in how, how to handle this survey in chaos community. Okay. Yeah, the, the premise of this survey was, and maybe this aligns with what you're talking about, Yohei, is that I'd say in 2020 and 2021, uh, it's becoming apparent that the chaos project is, um, it's being recognized as a project around community health and sustainability. And I think different organizations are starting to kind of look at the work that we're doing and, and use the work that is coming out of the chaos project in different forms. Mm. And so the survey is about trying to understand, are people using the software? And if so, how are people using the metrics definitions? And if so, how, what else would they like to see from the chaos project? So it's, I think it's a really about surveying companies and organizations and other okay. open source communities yeah, yeah as to how they're how they're using the resources that are coming from the chaos project mm -hmm. okay so 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 i think the the whole survey is just one survey a half a year or we can we just do it one uh, one time per year or just the just the several times or we keep it at the survey for long term uh, to probably be, I actually was just listening to you talk again. I mean, it would probably be once a year. I mean, it would probably help us with goal setting tremendously okay. for the year. If we, if we, if we think we're doing something and people are like, yeah, I never, ever look at that, <laughs> you know, then we should probably stop doing that. Or if, if they mentioned, say the DEI badging program is really fundamentally uh -huh. important, uh -huh. then that's obviously okay. something we should continue to support. So probably once a year would be my guess. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Yui. Um, all right. This is this is really good. I think this gives us a lot to go off of. And I think the other nice thing is that um, I would say that none of these items on here are completely new. I think we've been making some progress or thinking about these items for 
maybe about six months now to a year, right? Um, okay, great. Uh, is there anything else? Because this is it for the meeting today. This is just it's yeah. just mostly about what what we can do in 2022, mm -hmm. and when we don't have uh, meetings. For next month. So so months. from from the tax law, I, I, one point I I don't quite understand that uh, implement new DEI recommendations to uh, so consideration of dark mode. What that dark okay, mode sure. means? That was just an example that came up yesterday. So what that was was over the course of the last year uh, we had received funding from the ford foundation to do a reflection on the chaos project kind of our own self-reflection on how we can improve diversity equity and inclusion within the project itself right so what are things that we can do and try to support to um to make the project more accessible to others so for example uh translations was something that had come up in the recommendations and i mean it was kind of a great timing that we were able to do metrics translations because that obviously improves accessibility for a whole community that wouldn't otherwise um, have that um so that's just one example so we have a set of recommendations probably about a dozen recommendations of things to do within the chaos project um, so, I mean, one of the recommendations was our website is, is like a, it's like a brick wall sometimes coming into yeah. it, right? So we need yeah. to lower the barriers to entry on the website. And that's something that's also in this list. So the recommendations were just that in 2021, it was a list of things to do. Some have been implemented like translations, others are yet to do. And then one of the things that came up yesterday was, uh, dark mode is like on GitHub, you can have the light mode and the dark mode. I think Slack has light nice. mode and dark. Is that yeah. a mistake? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the VS so code. Just making sure. And it's funny, too, because actually, Don, you may or may not remember this, but the Chaos logo wasn't showing up in dark mode on GitHub for a while. You had actually put in a request. You're, you're like, this, is, this looks like garbage. Yeah. <laughs> fixed it but just kind of looking at and i think it's a good recommendation but just kind of looking at how things look in these different in these different settings because things can look pretty poor sometimes so that's what that is okay and and the and the, the, the other thing is about metrics model, you know, we have spent uh, several months about uh, to, to working together about metrics models. And uh, as I see here, we, we, we have some plans to, to on the delivery of metrics model. Uh, but it means it, uh, it will be de delivered at, at, uh, at frequently at, uh, at the metrics. Uh, they they both will be released together at the same time, or they will be released uh, separately. The I think the the hope is is that the metrics model. So the way that we release metrics right now mm -hmm. is that if a working group completes a metric, say tomorrow, it's mm -hmm. actually released, kind of as a as a as a part of a continuous release process, just okay. so we can get the model. Out, or, I'm sorry, just so we can get the metric out there. Yeah, yeah. But then it's officially released every six months. So we have kind of a, a cadence that is saying, listen, everything that came out over the course of the last six months, we're going to put it into the official release, which is the PDF. That's the, the actual release mode. And I think metrics models would follow something similar that we could continuously release metrics models that are just kind of available on a one by one basis. But then every six months, we will release the official collection of mm -hmm. metrics models. So it would be half a dozen to a dozen metrics models released every six months. Mm -hmm. the, things, the interesting things with that, we, I, I share one of my, uh, uh, one of the, uh, in the chaos, in the chaos China uh, meetings, uh, I introduce metrics model to the people who join this meeting. They have super interesting on, on both things because the, they 
they think that uh, they already have the similar ideas. Actually, they have doing this, the similar things in their own communities. So I, I told them, I told them that why don't you just uh, contribute your ideas to 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 the to our communities to share yeah. to share with us together. Yeah, because I I I, I believe that some of the community they really do some deep learning and uh, and the studies on, on on these things and they already doing that in the practice so so i am super encourage encourage them to 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 share their ideas and uh, talk talk discuss with us and uh, contribute to the to the chaos so it's uh, it's very important to everyone even if I, that would be amazing. Cause I think that's what a lot yeah. of metrics are anyway. They are what people are already doing in practice. Yeah. We're trying to capture it and, and share it with others. Yeah. Even if they could, you know how the metrics model um, template is pretty simple. Even cool. if they could just put together like what the general idea behind the model is like just a sentence or two, that might be cool. enough. And the metrics that they look at, or they, mm. the metrics that they use to build the model, that would be extremely helpful. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I do think, Sean, and, and or just everybody on this call, we we're going to have to think about at least with respect to the metrics models. There's going to be a template for the mm -hmm. metrics model, which is similar to the metrics themselves. You know what I mean? It's just markdown file um but then there's a we're also planning on having uh notebooks accompany the metrics models uh-huh it would be uh -huh. that's interesting yeah deployments of the metrics models that can be deployed with a notebook and that would be one of the really the first time we've done that and we'll have to think about how that that looks on the website as well and how we distribute those or if it's just a repository or, or what, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the metrics models warrant the verbal description. And I think some of the things we're trying to do to represent them in either Jupyter notebooks or something else, um, will help. I think that, I think the concrete implementation helps people see what a metric model is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think it would just be putting them in a repo, Sean? Um, you, you know, I, I, so we've had Jupyter Notebooks and repos before, and, and we still do have one re, uh, repo with um, Jupyter Notebooks that is the dominant content. And I think, I think making this something that is the dominant content would be good. And this might be a way that we can collaborate. Um, I mentioned in the community meeting yesterday, uh, working to build the software development community or the contributor community for software inside of chaos uh, and working closely with Grimoire Lab on that. And so I think that's a conversation that uh, Georg and Daniel and I will likely have after the first of the year. I don't, I don't expect I'll be able to coordinate any of them <laughs> before that because I think Georg's off offline for basically the rest of the year. <coughs> is. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, I don't mean to give you this action item now, but like yeah. maybe think about how the notebooks would play into that as well. Yeah. Just I, that, yeah, I guess that's the leap I guess I didn't communicate is that I think the notebooks could be a part of that collaboration, giving people ways of accessing data that's gathered by both system. Gotcha. Both systems, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I think we have our work cut out for us in 2022. Yeah. It's gonna be a busy <laughs> year. Should be good. Uh, any, any last thoughts from folks on this? I've had I had the advantage of reviewing this in the community meeting, so I think you know communicating with Yahui and getting his perspective has been a really important endeavor. 
Agreed. All right. Oh, I have one last question. Actually, yes. I have been I have been asked many times recently from my managers, a boss. So every time we 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 pop up a new ideas about metrics, or I I give them a metrics I got from chaos. So is there is there any um you know to the area to support this metrics to let them believe this metrics is could help them i mean could could it be a, a actualized uh, make paper okay this 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 metrics is coming from the result or, or research result of, of one paper or they just they they come from some best practice from some communities so i always been asked ask the these questions or from 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 the leader team so what right now i think we point to the large scale you know the very extensive collaboration that we have with companies inside of the linux foundation mm -hmm. and and the work that that they're doing is really driving our priorities so when we talk about metrics models that's influenced by uh, the discussions we've had here it's it's also influenced by discussions that have happened in other working groups and by the by the actual practices of people that are running open source program offices so this is information that is widely used and i think we take that sort of um as our our credibility to bring it forward to management type people mm -hmm. however I think I think what you're asking for is you know uh, some kind of and we do have some scientific papers that mm -hmm. that we've published um, Matt and I but I think we can also <clears throat> write more and give you more scientific backup that's mm -hmm. that's certainly on our uh, list of things to do this year the rest of this year mm -hmm. is that something that's more helpful or is a blog post that's helpful <laughs> I, I just want to just want our metrics or metrics model become more convinced to mm -hmm. to or uh, more practical to other communities to let them to trust our communities to use them directly or they are based on our metrics description for example uh, this is coming from the research re result of some paper or this is some be best practice from some communities they have run so if we could give those press uh, evidence to 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 those people they would be more uh, would would more trust trust the metrics we we present or or the metric model we we create because they all coming from our research results or best practice i matt i don't know what you think but i don't know i i I think the people that are using and building and building off of the metrics and the data that's being gathered are on the leading edge of making sense of open source software metrics. Hmm. Um, I don't want to call out Dawn while she's fixing her computer, but um, I don't know. What, what, are, you, what, what are your question? What, I, I what was... are your, your thoughts on on how to communicate with management about? the credibility and significance of chaos metrics as a way of helping to understand open source engagement from a corporate management perspective. Yeah, the thing that's helped me um, is finding ways to tie it back to what management cares about. So so when I when I look at metrics, I look at what we're trying to do kind of as a company, as an organization, as a team, whatever. And I try to find the metrics that are going to be able to help me demonstrate that I'm, you know, that whatever it is that we're looking at is successful from the standpoint of what we're trying to achieve. So I, I always try to tie to tie this stuff back. Um, so, you know, and in, in our case, you know, some of the metrics that we're using, um, one of our one of our corporate guidelines for open source projects is that we respond to pull requests within two business days. So I'm measuring that as my response time and looking at how often projects respond to pull requests within mm -hmm. two business days, mm -hmm. um, as an example. And then, you know, another 
big indicator for us is um, you know making sure that our projects are secure and so one of the things i'm looking at is you know do we do we do releases on a regular and frequent basis meaning that when we find security issues do we fix them and patch them and and roll them into a release so it's it's things like that that i try to look at <coughs> important to the company and then find the metrics that that help measure that probably have a presentation or something somewhere that does that or talks about that let me let me yeah. look i can link something i mean the thing is that we really uh give the uh give communities or our inside report about based on the metrics we have and uh, some some of this re report is uh, some result like like here it's about response time uh, like uh, issue response time is too long or pr response time or comments is too too short so but uh, be, but uh, after after the community start looking at this this metrics results the second question would be the why uh, how how we can improve that anything we can do to improve the whole things and also if the response time is too uh, it's too long um what it's gonna be to to uh, uh what's the result of, of this uh, uh of insight so w what's the next step could be related to could be lead to so we have to predict uh, some bad, bad or good result based on this uh, current result Yeah, I mean, that's it's hard because it really, it, it always depends on what you're trying to do, right? Which makes it more difficult to, to measure, for sure. Uh, so, so recently I have spent a lot of time to about the, the data analysis and about the, the big data analysis, analysis. The things that, uh, together with the chaos metrics, we have to use more, uh, more data to uh, to connect to set up these connections between the result data and the, and the, some processing data to set up this relationship and also to predict what would happen if if uh, based on the current insight so there are a couple things in here yahui one is okay thanks don um is how how the metrics originate and like are they from research or are they from best practices totally anecdotally i would say that probably 90 percent of the metrics we have in chaos are from industry best practice maybe 80 percent um so if i look at the dei metrics i mean many of those originate from work that was done at Mozilla around DEI and DEI best practices. Mm -hmm. um, I look at, at metrics that are in evolution and many of those originated from the work that Batergia mm -hmm. and Sean were doing like in industry, just mm -hmm. working with folks and saying, what are the things that get asked for most frequently? There are some metrics that I think originate from from research uh, the one that comes to mind is um, issue label inclusivity so that's a DEI metric that was uh, done by some work from folks at Oregon State but I think largely the chaos project is set up I've said this kind of a few times is like a listening community we really just try to listen to what people are saying in industry and articulate that. So like when folks at Twitter talk about what they're looking at metrics wise, we we kind of always run under the assumption that that's, that's just simply an industry, it's a truth, that that's something that they're looking at and we try to articulate that as it might be useful for other people. Um, as Don was talking, you know, like what VMware is looking at, say whether it's response time or release cadence for security, that's just a reality of what they do. <laughs> we'll try to articulate that mm -hmm. in a metric. And so um, the working groups, they are inherently people who self-select into those groups. So we are capturing 
the things that people self-select into, but I would also say that the community members are folks from industry leading organizations who are, as Sean pointed out, really at the leading edge of thinking about health and sustainability from a metrics perspective. Uh, maybe a long answer, but that's kind of how I see the origin of metrics. Uh, um, and then the, the other point of how, what the second step is after seeing the results from the metrics, like what do you, so, so you see a, a response time that's four days instead of three days on a pull request. Like, what do you do to actually move that closer to two days? Um, to Don's point, it, the recommendations are so contextually specific sometimes it's hard for us as a project to make recommendations. I think the closest thing that we have talked about is having people write like user stories or just blog posts as to why, and I'm not asking Don to do this, but like why is, is two days an important measure for response time? Like how did that come to be? And if it is three days, like what are some things that you do at VMware to try to improve that? You know, it's and so just asking people that are using the metrics to write very short um, statements or blog posts as to how this even came to be and and what you do to nudge this in the direction that you would like to to get it nudged to. But to Don's point, like not everybody wants to necessarily nudge that to two days. Like it may not no. matter. I put that on the list of, of to do's in 2022, <laughs> articulating <Yeah>. the steps. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I do think that was something that wasn't captured and it's something that's come up a number of times. All right. Well, we are at the end of our time, everybody. Yeah. You, thank you for, for taking time to reflect on these with us. Um, some really good things that came out of this. For sure. Thank you. And Don and Sean and Elizabeth, I know you're there. We are. We are thanks. thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. Talk to you Thank later. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.